when you get big enough, you, uh, you upgrade to the cart. You start carrying around. They get a little bit bigger and they're gonna have an assistant come with the cart. So I always like to get my shoulder moving through the full range of motion and get my lats firing before I go get started. Today's a lat focused uh, back day. Um, so I like to start with a straight arm pull down, gets my shoulder going through the full range, gets a good contraction in the lat, gets the, the uh, wheels greased. So just a warm up, pretty light, doesn't need to be aggressive by any means, the point is not to tire us out, it's just to get blood flow going, get a good connection to the muscle. Um, Part of my warming up, as well as making sure that I have the capability to get in the positions that we're gonna need, um, part of that is external rotation. So being able to turn my humerus that way without compensation. So I'm gonna go into a face pull and kind of get the, the scapula moving and get into that external rotation. What's your reasoning for doing them at this height? There's, you can kind of do it in all sorts of angles, but I yeah, want, I'm focused on the external rotation, so I'm okay. trying to get back here, right? Because gotcha. for us to be, like for bodybuilding, if I want to do um, like a back double bye, yeah. I got to be able to get right. into external rotation. So, I mean, there's not really a wrong way to do it, but pulling down, I don't, it's going to be more me trying to pull trap and like yeah. that kind of thing. So I'm trying to focus on the humerus moving. So part of what I talked about was obviously this is not where her and I normally train. Um, so setting up my programming to hit similar exercises in a different environment and still get the same results. So I'm um, going to show you how I set up different things. Uh, anyone who follows me uh, has seen me do these movement patterns just in a different capacity. So usually it's single arm cable pull down. We're going to use the Nautilus machine. Usually it's chest supported T-bar. We're gonna use an upper back prime row. Uh, and then we're gonna move around some other things. I haven't quite figured out where we're gonna move some stuff. So um, we'll figure that out on the fly. So you guys can understand how you can still do your same program in a different environment, different equipment, different gym, um, and get a good workout. A lot of times when people do back movements like this, there's a lot of over pulling. And when we're trying to hit lats, it's about pulling that arm forward, not pulling back. So um, if you want to hop on there, I can kind of talk it through while she's doing it. When I'm doing this exercise, I'm thinking about pushing my hands away from me. So I'm pushing my hands out and down, not just yanking it down, okay? Because if we start pulling like this, we're now starting to get into retraction. And we're not doing a row here. That's not what we're setting up. So what Emery's going to do is push her hands away and drive through her elbow. So your lat doesn't connect to your wrist. So the hand position is only important to drive where her elbow is going. <clears throat> so a neutral or even turned under hand grip on some exercises keeps that elbow tight and close to the body so that we can take that upper arm through a full uh, extension pattern, which is what your lat does. Obviously other muscle groups are going to be working while we're doing this. There's no I completely isolating muscles, but we can bias a certain muscle. So like the terminology there is a little bit different. So we're making it to where the lat is advantage to take the work, to do the job that we're trying to do to build that, build that muscle. I want bigger lats, I'm gonna train lats. How do I train lats? By biasing lats. And that comes back to the over rowing and, and trying to get everything from your scapula. Because the lat attaches to the, or is by the scapula, but it has nothing to do with like retraction and protraction. It's all about humeral extension, okay? Um, did you do face pulls already? No. You wanna do another one there? Yeah, I'll do okay. one. So she's gonna do another thing of face pulls. I try, it, try it this way. Let's okay, see. Let's um, so, yeah. Okay. So still same thing, start in that same manner where you're gonna drive from the scapula like you're getting your rear delts. But as you're getting about here, just go ahead and rotate out trying to bring those hands behind your head. I need to lower the weight. Huh? I might need to lower okay. it. Yeah. It, it's not like, this is not about weight. right, exactly. Yeah. And like, you can slowly progress it, but it's not about how much can we move. So let it come back forward. Yep, come all, all the way, way forward. Yep, and then drive 
So make it one smooth motion, yep. And flow through the elbow, yeah, there you go, good. So make it one smooth pull back through, yeah. So she's getting the retraction of her scapula as well as externally rotating that humerus so that we've got full movement through there. Um, there's no need to like fully fatigue the muscle. Um, it's a small muscle group. We're not trying to tire it out. We're just trying to get it going through its movement so it goes, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. This is where I can go. These are what my capabilities are. The more we strengthen them in that position, the better they're gonna get. Um, yeah. They've still got a few more sets on the piece we wanna use. Um, so, warm up with something else right quick, like a row or something, just get a little blood yeah. in there. Do you want to do single? Yeah, we could do like the cable right quick, make okay. it pretty easy since we're right here. I kind of want to keep that pull down first. Yeah. Um, something else that uh, is overlooked a lot is just proper programming, meaning where we put exercises in. So, the way the workout is structured is we start through the full range of motion of the lat where if we tired the lat out first, it'd be a lot harder to get that full range. Um, so we want to take it through the full range first when we're strongest to get the most out of it. And then we go to an upper back movement so it has a little bit of a rest. Then we go to a row pattern where it's just a partial range of motion. So we're only here and not the full thing here. Uh, and then the last one, we take the uh, load and place it where it's heaviest at the beginning and lighter as we pull through as our lat's really weak because it's going to be harder to get to that shorter position as we get weaker. Um, so just get a little bit more blood in the lats and then we'll, we'll roll from there. So you're having to focus more on core. This just kind of fully isolates that lat there. So the way we have it uh, set up, if you follow the cable from the pulley to her shoulder, it's in a single line. Like I touched on, extension is what our lat does. It helps in other movements, but that is the way we bias the lat. Um, so by setting up here and coming straight back and it's not coming across or in or at some weird angle, we can fully isolate that extension and get the lat to do as much as possible. Um, the same side foot braced just gives us a better bracing to be able to output on the movement pattern. Um, She's slightly crunched to the side so she can get that lat fully short over here. Uh, if you go from straight up to just leaned over a little bit, you'll notice a difference in how the contraction is. So give it a shot, see what you think there. Good, much better. So when she was popping her shoulders up at the top, it takes it out of the lat. We start to put it into this, this uh, elevation of the scapula um, and it moves off into some of those other places that she said was hurting her. Um, so slowly over time, what she needs to start doing is, and that will help her is getting a little bit more and more further into that movement as she does this more often, helps her get overhead, right? Because the, the end goal is like, we need to be able to put our arms overhead. And when we have a lot of muscle, she's got a lot of muscle for a female, like getting overhead starts to be a difficult thing to do. And the bigger you get, the harder it gets. Um, so like using this exercise to slowly kind of stretch me more into that end range, where I can have control over it still with my lat is kind of the goal. Um, we don't need it to be all the way up here to train lats, but for shoulder function, that's what we need to do. When we're doing a lat exercise, I'm gonna push that arm forward. I'm gonna keep repeating the same stuff. Um, so when she pulls down, she's gonna kind of lean to that side, and then instead of pulling all the way back, she's gonna think about driving that elbow to the hip pad. So driving that 40 mountain scoop back. And if you wanna put the, if it, the hip pad needs to be lower, you can. So she's gonna, have the intent of driving her elbow that way. Like she's dragging her forearm forward. You feel that? This is so beautiful. You feel that now? Yeah. And same thing at the top. Don't pop from the top, drive the elbow. See that? Much better, good. Now it's more of a contraction than it is driving. Or like getting a momentum down, right? Because yeah. we can still get the lat to fire from up here. So we don't need to jerk it down. And then like we talked about, the hand determines where the elbow goes. So she's at a neutral grip and even a slightly supinated grip. So turning under, I prefer a slightly supinated because it helps my elbow feel more stable. That neutral or underhand position is gonna help us drive our elbow to that hip and stay in that extension range versus if I turn my hand out, my elbow wants to go that way. If I try to do a close grip pull down like this, this um, the lat pull down and I have my hand facing this way, my elbow wants to drive that direction. 
And while my lat will help that, there some, it's not gonna train the full lat there. So yes, you can hit a lat, you can hit some lats here, but you're not gonna get like all the way down to your hip by having your elbows out this way. It's still a movement that you need to do to develop a full back, but to fully hit the lat from top to bottom, this is the range we need to work in. You'll notice I'm kind of pushing the same side leg forward and that's what's bracing into the pad. Um, it just puts me in a better position to drive here, a uh, more stable position. And then this is my anchor point. So instead of having the anchor point on this side to where my obliques now have to do a shitload of work, by having my leg here under this pad, I can lock in on that thing and just roll. Her and I both have a similar style where we're gonna do top set back offs. Right now you're just gonna see us touch some weight. As we go up in weight, we're gonna come down in reps on the warm ups. Um, neither one of us get to use this often, so I'm sure you're gonna have to play around with figuring out what weights are. Right. So we're gonna kind of touch a few things here, probably more warm ups than we would normally do to get a feel for the piece of equipment. That felt crazy light, so I'm yeah. feeling good. What do you want? I know want? what my top is. Uh, it's gonna be two and a quarter. Okay, top. you're touching this, yeah. and then you're ready to go? Yeah. Okay, cool. So this is gonna be our top set. She's gonna go eight to 12 ish in that ballpark. She's gonna go until she fails, so. Whatever that weight is with this, to keep that shoulder locked down. Three, four, right five, six, seven, keep that shoulder down. Eight, nine, come on. Ten. All you, come on. Drive, drive, come on, fight, good. Another, good. All right, pushing this to her, but she's already doing it just kind of instinctively. Uh, you can tell she does top set back off with unilateral movements like this. She needs to rest between sides because like if she goes straight into the other side, it's not gonna have as much energy to do the exercise, right? So if I train my strong side first and then my weak side goes right after, not only is it my weak side, but I also have less energy to expend on it. So maybe I miss reps. Maybe I can't match the same side. Maybe uh, reps get really sloppy trying to match those reps. So start on your weak side, rest between sides on, on unilateral work. You don't have to rest forever. Rest for like a minute, whatever, and then roll again. Yeah, my kind of rule of thumb is I let my heart rate come down to like 120, 130, uh, typically upwards of 170 during a top set. Um, Depending I, on the I movement, like yeah. I like training my weak side first. Yep. Uh, and then yep. matching the reps. see me touching my stomach a lot. I had hernia surgery like four months ago and not just a small one, it's a big hernia surgery. So I have to be extra conscious of my core. Like I could even feel it as I switched to this side because that's, they went laparoscopically through this side. So there's a little bit more issues bracing over here. Um, so as I locked in, I could tell that this wasn't quite the same as it was over here. I had to engage this a bit harder than normal. So for those who aren't familiar with top set back off, uh, she's gonna drop the weight down, go a little bit higher rep, still going to failure. Intro. The blueberry, blue raspberry, not blueberry. Um, start drinking that as we're warming up because it's got a lot of good stuff in there that kind of enhances the pump and keeps it kind of extended through the whole workout. So it's got the beta alanine in there. The D-ribose is gonna help you keep your energy levels higher so you can keep your endurance across the session because as we go along, we're doing top set back off here, we get to a point where we're like beat, like we've got nothing left. So Intra, help, Intra helps resupply that, keep us rolling through the whole time. Uh, for me and strong majority of people, back is a weakness. 
it's a hard muscle group to train. You can't see it. A lot of times it gets messed up a little bit. So uh, we're not only doing lats today. I want to get some kind of upper back movement. Usually I do a, a T-bar, but really want to use this. So we're going to set this up for upper back. Uh, show you what that looks like. So she's doing a neutral grip position. This brings up a good point. Like not everything neutral grip is going to be lat focused. Her lats will work here, but she's more focused on the retraction of her scapula. Um, so she's keeping her elbows a bit tighter to the body. You're going to see me pulling mine up a bit higher. So hitting a little bit more upper trap rhomboid than middle back. Um, she asked how I was going to load it. So how we're going to load it is mostly going to be top peg and probably some middle, but um, our back is weakest when we're in that, that fully contracted position. So this is going to help kind of dump some of that load off at the top. But so when I'm doing this movement from behind, uh, you're going to see me kind of open my scapula up, but I'm not going to let it dump forward. So usually at the bottom, people kind of roll their shoulders up to let it open up. But if we do that, we're going to cause issues to our subscap. It's going to start to lock up. You're going to start getting this weird mid pain, back, uh, pain in your middle of your back. So instead, I'm thinking about wrapping my scapula around the pad this direction, okay? Keeping them down and letting that thing open up before I drive back. We, we don't, as bodybuilders, we spend a lot of time compressed. We're shoulder or chest pressing and shoulder pressing and we're rowing really hard and we're, we're always compressing this way. So we need to open that up and do the opposite. Let ourselves open up and go into protraction instead of just retraction all the time. So we can work that position and again, make the muscle stronger in that weakened position. So I'm gonna open up around the pad, drive for the elbows. Open up, drive. Open up around the pad, yeah. When I set up a rep range and I go eight to 12, 12 to 15, 12 is the goal, right? And then I have a buffer of eight. So if I'm looking to increase strength, when I go up and wait on the, on a, the next set, the next session, um, if I didn't get it to 12, I've got to wait till I get it to 12. But the lowest, like I shouldn't be trying to get it to 12 and I only got four. Like that's too much of a gap there. Um, so it gives me a buffer to kind of keep progression up, but I'm always aiming for the high end of the rep range. So I'm always aiming for 12 and 15, but my buffer is the eight and the, the 12 on the second set. I think that made sense. There's a lot of numbers in that math. A good piece of equipment. Yeah, girl. Yeah, come on. Fight through it. It's heavy at the beginning. It's lighter. Come on. There you go. Come on. Grind through it. Come on. Grind. Come on. Give me another. I barely held. Come on. Drive. It's going to get lighter. Come on. Drive. Finish. Yep. Come on. Finish. Come on. Traps. Come on. Boom. Get easier as we drive. So you have to finish that rep. Finish, you keep going. You know you're gonna be able to get through it. So just keep powering. I mean, obviously, don't push through injury. If you start to feel something hurt, fucking stop. But So while she's doing this one, I'll explain how this machine works. So it also has the same kind of resistance pattern where it gets lighter as we pull. So if uh, my cameraman will come down here and look at this. That's where everything levers. So this is the axis of rotation of the machine. And as she pulls, as she goes to do the movement, watch what happens with the weight. So it gets closer to over the top of this point here where the machine is moving, okay? So as it gets closer to that and goes over the top of it, the machine gets lighter. So our lat is really getting weak now because we've already taxed the shit out of it in other places. So this kind of helps us get those grinder reps. Like the purpose of that jumping off and getting easier is to get those grinder reps. That's what's gonna get us the tissue, like fighting through that stuff. Like if your last rep is like, then you set it down, you didn't do shit, you wasted your time. You gotta do more sets now. You gotta do more volume because your intensity is low. If you're training intensely like us, we gotta take every inch that we can with these things.
Quick adjustment on what we're doing. Uh, we're gonna do a, another lat pull down, but I think we're both pretty roasted on lats, so we're gonna do more of an upper back uh, pull down. Um, so going wider grip, elbows are gonna go out wide instead of tucking close to the body. Um, just wide grip pull down. I'll show when she gets on here, but we're working more here than we are anything else. So Terry's lower trap, kind of pulling that scapula under. So it's a, more of an upper back pull down here and here. If the Terry's major's working, the lat's gonna work to a certain degree. They assist each other. So, or the Terry's major assists the lat. So if it's working, the lat is going to work some, but it's not gonna get the full fibers of lat like we've already been doing over here. Last little bit, just finish out, go higher rep. 12 to 15, a little lighter. We've already pushed, a, pushed it out of the bed. We've already pushed a lot of blood into the muscle. It's nice and pumped up. So by doing this and letting things open up at the top and kind of expand, we create a little bit more room for that blood to fill more cavities and let that muscle swell. So there's something to your muscle swelling. It gives a signal to the body that it needs to grow. So by getting that thing to open up and push more blood into there, we can get a little bit more growth out of it. Rear delts to finish out, real small muscle. They've been working the whole time while we're doing these rows, but we can tax them just a little bit more. I like to go really high rep with these, so the range is 12 to 20. Um, so we're aiming for 20, but second set, we have a big buffer because your rear delt will give out pretty quickly. Um, a lot of people want to power with their traps, so I'm going to show you how not to do that. Um, a little word of advice on, the, on these handles. This isn't all the way together. This is. I don't go all the way together for a reason. A buddy of mine got his thumb caught between the pegs as it came together and exploded his thumb. So don't do that. Just, yeah. Yeah, so just put it on the second to last peg. It's plenty of room, trust me. You don't want to lose a thumb. So when I get set, I'm not sit seated all the way forward here. I'm kind of back on the pad and leaning my chest into it. I'm gonna grab neutral. Then when I get started, this is just my arms in normal position. I'm gonna extend them out in front of me. So I'm gonna push them forward. And then I'm gonna drive my hands to the sides of the room. So I'm trying to drive my hands wide, not back. So when people go back, they end up powering from their traps and pulling that all together. We've already hit those, we're not doing that today. So we're driving forward and then we press out and wide. And I stop where my scapula starts to take over the movement. That's it for the session today. We're all done, hope you guys enjoyed that. We are both pretty smashed up after that. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Tune in for next time.